change what's happening in Memphis, and that's that our community is shrinking. We got to start thinking about how you grow the community. The other piece of the puzzle is if we if we got to focus on specific industries when we think about who we want to recruit here, we got to think about what our competitive comparative advantage is. Generally, in the past, when we think about recruiting industry, we say, oh, let's recruit the lowest paying jobs we can find, right? That's, that's what we say. Let's say, let's find the, the wealthiest people we can find and give them a lot of money, yeah. and let's hope they bring their lowest paid jobs here. Yeah. That's what we want, right? We got to say, enough of that. We, we got to say, look, where do we have an advantage? And we've got an advantage in, obviously, logistics, but also in tourism. Yes. Right? Those kinds of jobs uh, can be higher paying. We need to focus on that so instead of some of this other stuff, this low-wage manufacturing stuff, uh, which, which, which we throw a lot of money at folks to bring these jobs to town. That's not, that's not the way to go in my view. The third piece of it is, is we got to make sure our kids leave school with some sort of skills yes. that they can actually leverage in, into a meaningful career. Yes. So that's the vocational training and so yes. forth. Right? That's the stuff we've been talking about for years yes. and years and years and haven't done it. In fact, we've gone backwards. Yes. Because a lot of our vocational and career and technical training was housed at Messick. Is Messick? And Messick is closed. Absolutely. Right. It's closed. Absolutely. So, so we got to do something about those things. So That's part of our plan. I'm Go a ahead. graduate of the Booker T. Washington oh, High School. Yes. And we had a whole vocational building. We mm -hmm. had a cosmetology. Mm -hmm. We had a brick mason. Mm -hmm. We had an auto mechanic. We had a. a Culinary art where food preparation was done. Mm -hmm. We had sewing. Mm -hmm. We had all. We had a full okay. building. I'm sure the building still exists. Uh -huh. Where you could. We had shoe repair. Mm -hmm. Where you had young men learning how to repair shoes. You know, in high school. I had a friend. We had a full kitchen, like like a restaurant type. We were doing food service and serving food. Mm -hmm. And they were teaching them and getting them prepared in, in, in the invocation. And yet a lot of, everybody's not going to go into traditional occupations. And some kids were good at getting their cosmetology license, getting ready and barbering before, you know, right in high school. I agree. I have a plan regarding this. I would like to bring this back. And I have a great proposal to help you uh, I need it. think of a way to bring sure. this back because it's no way this should be out of schools and this will help a lot of kids stay out of the criminal justice system mm -hmm. and like she said everyone is not college uh, ready but they can ha everyone has a trade and a skill and a gift that they can use we have a caller caller you live on the live show KWM 9 talk radio what's on your mind yes uh, 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 mr. Harris I'm really enjoying this conversation and uh, I want to say that what you say bringing in cheap jobs yes, you know, cheap jobs I mean it, it's insane and we give people we call pallets. We get these we get these people this money to come and make food out of us. And that's <laughs> no doubt about it. it. You're right. And that needs to be changed. One thing you need to say that I'm, I'm I, you know, I vote uh, people. Uh, uh, this is first one of the first few times that I'm voting for a reason. The reason you gave me was that we attack. That you said you're gonna work hard to find out what is the why is these people uh, making a fraud of us and we ain't mad. Fifty dollars every time I go get my car. And not just me, it's going to be my daughter, it's going to be my son, and everybody uh, perceive that. You know, we, you know, black people got all the emotions on when white folks don't, they're going to, you know, they hit this education with them, and they, and they, they voted for the tax. How you vote for a tax? <laughs> How you vote for somebody to take money out your pocket? I don't understand it. But black people got to go with these white folks, believing that these white folks going to take their money and do the right thing with it. I don't know how you can even think that way. And uh, uh, I, me and my dad, I, was, me, I used to laugh at him. Uh, What's your question, I, sir? Oh, uh, my question is, uh, well, I don't really have a question. People need to get out and vote. You want to encourage people to vote. Hey, Harris, thank you so much. Because you, you make it, you make sense. How you going to bring, how you going to pay somebody to bring in a full job to, to get some people some, uh, so can so you let me ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. So can you commit to get at least five to ten of your friends to vote for? Well, I don't have almost all my friends that did. I'm seven years old. Okay. But it, they don't have to be my friends. Yeah, we want you to spread the word, okay? I, that's what I'm gonna do. We appreciate I, you. I, I haven't done this for no candidate. I ain't vote for. Uh, Mr. Harris and the child seem to think that we're so good to y'all. I don't see how we can get these people another chance to do the same thing. I don't care if they pee, ain't into this color. I'm into your mind. Well, we'll, hey, we appreciate you for calling in. And, and, 
Y'all stay a senior citizen now. And 70 years old is not old, okay? Sure is. It's so not we today. want you to keep on living. Now. I bet you can't beat me jogging. I bet you can't beat me. So the issue is public safety and education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, Senator. We got some voters. Well, I, I'm going to tell you this, though. Uh, he's right about that wheel tax. Is that I hear a lot of people complain about that wheel tax. What is a wheel hey, tax? The wheel? I don't, you know. It wasn't I, even supposed I, to be oh, here that long. It's on your registry. It was, yeah, it was like supposed on. to come, and it was supposed to be a, a time period for the, the roads and something like that, and it was supposed to go away. It has yeah. not gone away. So it might, it's a little bit before my time, but as I recall, it was supposed to be to air condition, in the, air condition the schools back in the day. Yeah, uh, and uh, it never went away. <laughs> uh, now, I believe the wheel tax money still goes towards education. So in order to get get in order to get rid of it, we've got to figure out how to hold the schools harmless. Guess how much um, it is? Well, let's find out where it's going. It's fifty dollars. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 Let's find out where it's going. How about that? Well, supposedly it's still going to education, but the school's air conditioning program has already been done, so it's not necessarily going to that anymore. But the, but 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 he's right. It is a it is a central complaint. It is a real important complaint of a whole lot of people in our county. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody's looked at it, so that I'm committed to looking at it. I would want to hold the school system harmless to make sure that they're not losing any money. But I do think it's time to try to figure out a way to get rid of that wheel tax uh, because, you know, people don't like it. And that's enough for me. You know, I'm not that kind of politician that's <laughs> looking for all these things. But I'm the kind of politician people tell me they don't want something. Hello. <laughs> I try to figure out how to well, thank get you. done, and I kind of move on. Thank you. And I've heard that enough times from enough people. Yeah. But to me, it's a top priority. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back on the uh, the. Uh, we have about ten minutes. The yeah. uh, the you know, we talked about education, this mm -hmm. vocation. We got to get this back in schools. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the poverty uh, rate. How can we com uh, combat that here in Shelby County? So poverty rate is is, is horrendous, right? So we have nine hundred and fifty thousand people that live in the county, and about two hundred thousand of them live in poverty. Wow. Obviously, the statistics in the city of Memphis are even more yes. uh, are worse. Or more, we have more challenges in the city. I mean, in the city of Memphis, uh, nearly half of our kids live in poverty. Uh, and, they, and, and this is generational poverty, so it's yes. passed from one family to the next family, and so on and so forth. So we've got to do a, a better job of laser, laser focusing on that. And one of the ways you do it is what we've already kind of talked about already is you've got to create more meaningful opportunity for students to succeed. Yes. Uh, the vocational training. Yes. Right. Uh, it's one answer. Right. We've got about 109,000 kids in Shelby County school system uh, every day. And of those 109,000, according to the commercial appeal a few days ago, only about two or 300 of them get a certification and a skill in a year. Two wow. to three hundred. How is that possible, wow. right? And we know that there's money to be made there. Yes. My dad is a HVAC, HVAC technician, certified and so forth, uh, and that's how he makes his living. Uh, so there's money in uh, being able to uh, uh, fix fix an air conditioner yes. or being uh, or, uh, and, or a plumber, right? He, yeah, he has, he has so many customers, he don't know what to do with them. Uh, or being an electrician and so forth. So we got to make sure that kids who want that opportunity are uh, that is made available to them. We got another caller. Caller, you live on the live show on KWA Nine Talk Radio. I'm Lee's voice. This is the Senator Lee Harris in the studio. What's on your mind? We got one minute. We got one minute. The, 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 the total um, revenues of the wheel tax have been going towards the school system and towards and, and to fund the school system mm -hmm. generates around thirty three million a year. So the senator. That would be a, a point of contention to look at uh, if you um, get rid of the wheel tax. You're going to create a $33 million hole uh, in the in the school budget. But it was also it was also created as another source of funding to for school construction and then for the Fed and for road construction. So 114 million went to the city and county for school construction, including the air conditioning of the school. 35 million for housing initiatives in the county. 30 million went for new facilities at the regional med, and 21 million went for county road projects. So that is how the wheel tax was divided. It funded bonds for a 20-year period. So the wheel tax completed the funding of those bonds in. in 2007. Now, what, so, what's your name, sir? Who are we getting this information from? What's your name? Uh, this is Mo Lee. The information you get, you get the information from the from the county commission uh, budget document. 
Okay. Uh, downtown. All right. That's, that's where you get them. All the right. Tax is, that was the purpose of the wheel tax, and that was the, the, that is how the money was divided and spent it. Thank you very much, sir. No, I think that's very helpful. Uh, as I said, I, I, you know, I, I, the money goes to education right now, as far as I know. So we have to figure out a way to, to hold the school system harmless. In other words, we have to figure out a way to replace the revenue to the school system. Agreed. In yeah. order to get get rid of the wheel tax. That's, yeah. what, that's what I meant by holding the school, school system harmless. That's, awesome. yeah. Yeah. that's exactly what you're saying. So you're going to look at it, and yeah. then you want to hold the city school, make sure that, that, that no harm comes to them. Exactly. But you definitely want to look at it. And that's good. I mean, yeah. you should go in and look at everything, turn over every stone. So yeah. you, we could take some of that money and bring in vocational back in school. I know, I know that's right. Let's go back on no, poverty. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the other, other piece of the puzzle is also, I mean, and this caller I think mentioned this uh, very briefly, is that healthcare, right? Healthcare is a yeah. very important consideration. Yes. Uh, regional one, the decision makers at regional ones are selected by are selected by the county mayor and in collaboration with the county commission and so forth. That's really important. Those decision makers in turn appoint the CEO of regional one. Yes. That's our only public hospital in town. There's a lot of charity care provided by regional one. Yes. It's important to make sure that that, that, that healthcare is accessible to yes. as many people as possible. Yes. That is a very top concern. Yes. And so what you want to have in that top job in county government is somebody who is committed to make sure, making sure that the flow of resources for charity care continues toward Regional 1. Right now, the county commission puts about $25 million a year into Regional 1 for charity care. You want to make sure that continues to flow. Because what will happen is, the other side of the aisle, really soon here, we'll start having a conversation about tax cuts and yeah. promising big tax cuts. Yeah. And when they promise big tax cuts, there's not a lot of places to cut. No, it's right? not. And uh, so the, one of the most... Obvious places to cut is the is the charity care that goes to regional one. Yes. And the reason why we shouldn't do that is because we should make sure that there is accessible health care to as many people in our community as possible. I agree. That's why that that's why that twenty five million dollar appropriation to region one is important and that's why we shouldn't take it away. We want to make sure region one is open and stable. So just be careful. Uh, about promises of tax cuts because yes. tax cuts come on the back of something. Yes. Uh, they come on the back of things like that. They come on the back of uh, opportunities to expand our investment in education. Yes. Right. They come on the back of, 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 our, of opportunities to expand vocational training in yes. our school system. Right? Yes. There's all sorts of things we could be doing that are top priorities. Yes. Right. I'm a cheap guy. I'm very frugal uh, and I like a tax cut as much as the next man. Right. You know, I drive a car with 200,000 miles when I'm in Nashville working on behalf of the citizens of Shelby County. I sleep in my office. Uh, I, I've never voted for uh, a tax increase uh, in my career and, and, and so forth, and I'm a very careful spender. Uh, but, the, the, but the point is, is that the priorities in this community are very clear. Yeah. Uh, people are tired of seeing this generational poverty, yes. and they want somebody to laser focus on it, yes. and they want to make sure that, our, that we make investments in education, and they want to make sure that there's access to health care. So that's what I'm going to beat the drum on, right? That's what I'm going to beat the drum on. And there's, there's going to be another candidate talking about something all together different yeah. and people will have a choice and I, you know i'm going to defend myself and talk about education and healthcare. and uh you know if that doesn't it doesn't if, if, if that's not your your uh if that's not your flavor that, that's okay well but, you have one minute uh senator to tell the people why they should vote for you on august the 2nd well so I, like i say i'm the only candidate who lives in the city who has leadership experience i'm also the only candidate that can campaign around the entire county Right, not just in the city of Memphis, although I've represented the city of Memphis and elected office for the last seven years. But this campaign travels from Georgetown to I mean sorry, Georgetown. <laughs> this campaign travels from Germantown to Boxtown, from yeah. Whitehaven to Collierville, from South Memphis, um, you know, to, to Fraser to Raleigh. We're all over the county and yes. we're all over the county with one message. So yes. I don't go go to South Memphis and, and talk about one thing and then go to Collierville and talk about another. Very good. In both communities I talk about we need to make investments in community, yes. into students, yes. uh, and to people in need. Yes. Thank you. Well, you heard it here. This is the candidate, the Democratic candidate for Shelby County Mayor. Are you going to come back on the show, sir, before August 2nd? I hope so. If you invite me, I'd love to be here. Thank yeah. you very much for having me. Yeah. I, think the, so, uh, I think the listeners uh, uh, are tuned in and, and taking notes, and we want to make sure that uh, nothing said here today is misconstrued. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go back and listen to this tape. Uh, we have it posted on our YouTube page, The Unleashed Voice, if you want to go back and listen to it at any time. So they are all archived. All our radio shows are archived. And so, uh, Senator's going to make me the vice president, a new position in Sheba County when he's become mayor. Vice president. I, 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 vice he's, president. he's joking, everybody. <laughs> Fourth class was that in the ass. That's a joke. <laughs> well, we've made it. Um, the Senator, we're going to get him in office. Vote for Lee Harris, Sheba County Mayor, on August 2nd. We have you back before August 2nd. Register to vote before... July 3rd. July 3rd.
GoVoteIn.com. That's it. See ya. We out of here. Oh, that's your theme song, yeah. I've heard that one.